Magnetism is a phenomenon of which we are all very well aware and which we see applications of in life all around us. Now one simple way of showing that magnetic forces actually exist is to consider a couple of bar magnets. Now with these bar magnets, if we move them one closely to the other, we can see that the other one is attracted to it. Or if we turn one of the bar magnets around and then move it towards the other bag bar magnet, we can see that there is a repulsion, that the other magnet is in fact driven away until it actually turns around and is attracted again. Another thing that which magnets will do is to attract something which is in fact ferromagnetic, that means it comes from an iron material. If we move it to a magnet towards it, it's attracted. But if we bring along a similar piece of material and move the two together, there's no attraction or repulsion at all. Now, the magnetic forces surround the magnet in what are called magnetic field lines. And if we take some iron filings in a dish and place a magnet underneath, we can see a movement. Now, in fact, the points where the movement can be seen in the iron filings is where the poles of the magnet are. And the field lines have been coming out of either end of the poles. Now we can move on to a very simple induction motor. We have here a handle for rotating some magnets, a bar with two horseshoe magnets on it, and a copper disc on a backing plate here. Now you can see that there is absolutely no contact between the magnets and the disc. However, if the magnets are rotated, the disc itself begins to rotate. And if you turn the magnets in the opposite direction, the disc will stop and then turn in the opposite direction. And if you stop rotating and hold this and the magnets are steady, it will bring the discs to a halt. If you have the discs rotating and you then stop turning the magnets and release them, the magnets will then be driven because of the motion of the discs. Now we've seen how we have a magnetic field around bar magnets and the magnetic forces acting on the iron filings and on the other magnets. Now we can also create magnetic forces by passing a DC current, that's a direct current, through the copper wire in a coil. Now I have here a coil which is um, wound with copper wire around here, uh, 500 turns of copper wire in fact. Now I'm going to pass a direct current through this by using this switch and varying the current with this variable rheostat here. Now I'm going to put this tray of iron filings on top of the coil and I'd like to stress that this is not an iron tray, it is in fact non-magnetic, it's aluminium. Now if I switch the current on, we can see a slight movement of the iron filings and if I turn up the current, that movement of the iron filings becomes even greater. Now there's a way of sh making this effect even greater. By placing an iron core in the midst of the coil. Now if I sit the, iron, the tray of iron filings on top of the coil, and I'll turn the ferrostat down again, if I then switch on, you can see straight away that the displacement of the filings is even greater in this case. And as I turn up the current, it becomes more marked and the filings even lift from the tray slightly. Here we again have a coil down the bottom with an iron core running into its centre and up above the coil. This time, however, we're passing just straightforward alternating current from the mains through the coil. Now if I put an aluminium ring over the top of the core, it'll just come down and sit above the coil. However, if I firstly switch on the current in the coil, and I then place the aluminium ring on, it will float, touching at all times the core, but all the same, just floating here. And if I push it down slightly, I have to push hard as the force increases when I move the bottom. And if I let go, it jumps up and it comes off the top of the rod. In fact, this same coil is becoming very hot when it is down the bottom here. And what's happening are the eddy currents, that's electrical currents, are being induced in this ring 
because of the magnetic fields, and there's then a repulsion, and this ring tends to move up the rod. And this is a sort of magnetic river. We have the effect of a flow of the magnetic field up the rod, which is making the ring come off like this. Now, to explain this, we'll look at this machine here. This machine is, in fact, just a series of rods which are free to move up and down like this. They can't move in any other direction, however. The rods are, in fact, driven up and down by this cam system along the bottom, which is driven by this handle here. Now, pay particular attention to this blue dot here. Now, when I rotate the cam, you can see that this blue dot is going up and down. However, Although you can see the motion of a wave along like this, there is no rod that is in fact moving in that direction. Now, I can introduce a ping pong ball at this side, and the ball will travel along quite happily and come off at the other end. But there again, there is no motion of any rod in this direction that the ball is moving. Now, it is this same principle which we can apply to the jumping ring, and I'll just show you that again. Now, I'll take the aluminium ring again and put it on the top of the coil. And when I switch on, the aluminium ring jumps up above the ring. This flowing magnetic field, there is nothing visible moving this way, but the ring is still travelling up the pole. Now, we've seen this idea of the flowing magnetic field, almost a magnetic river. Now, this principle is applied in the electric motor, a motor which you'll find around the house in washing machines, hoovers, in the record player, or in the cassette deck. I have here a rather special model of a motor. In fact, this motor can be opened up like so. Now, we have inside of it a rotor. This is free to rotate. This is the part of the motor that actually rotates. And in this, we have copper bars surrounding the central portion. Now, surrounding that, we have the coils, the electric coils again. In fact, in this induction motor, we have three different sets of coils, yellow, blue, and red. And in these coils, we have a different phased current passing. In each of these coils, the current reaches a maximum at a different time. Now, in fact, I'll bring back our wave machine here just to demonstrate this principle. Now, take heed again of the blue dot here. Now, as I rotate the handle, it starts to come up to the top. It reaches a maximum at the top. Then, as it starts to go down, the next yellow rod reaches a maximum. Then the next one, and then the next one. Now, looking back to the coils here, look at the, this yellow coil here. This one, say, reaches a maximum, followed by this red one, followed by this blue one. And it's this principle, looking at the wave machine, when we have it rotating and we put the ping pong ball on, that causes the ball to move along, like this. Well, in the same way, we can think in terms of a magnetic field flowing along the coils like this, because of one coil reaching a maximum after another. Now, this principle is applied on this machine I have here. This is the induction motor. Now, what we have here is the same as in the model of the motor. We have three sets of coils, but in this particular model, they're wrapped around soft iron and then encased, as you can see here. Now, I have again an aluminium plate. If I sit the aluminium plate on top of the coils like this, and switch on. As I turn up the current, we can see that the plate can be made to slide along the top of the coils, like this. And what's more, if I turn up the current, we can see that we get elevation. The greater the current, the greater the elevation. And if I let go again, the plate slides along on top like this, and if the current were sufficiently great, we would have the plate sliding along without any contact with the track. Well, it might be possible in the future to apply the same principle to transport. I have here a model of a train. And you can see on the bottom, we have here an aluminium strip. 
right along the bottom and on top is attached a fiberglass shell. Now this, in the same way as before, because of this aluminium plate the train will go along the track and I have here another induction motor except this track's about 20 foot long, it's much longer than the other one. And so if I actually put the train onto the track, we will see it go along. So if we actually put the train onto the track, let go, it shoots along quite happily. And the amount of elevation, of course, and the speed of the train all depends upon the current that's actually flowing in the coils. And you can see that when the train is in fact going along, there's no friction between the train and the um, track which makes for much better speed. It's anticipated that a train in the future may be able to run at 250 miles per hour. Now, we can change the phase around in the coils. This actual track, this motor, is made up of two separate motors. And what I'm doing now is altering it. So in the second half, um, the plate, when I put one on top, will be driven into the center on this half and it's also tending to go into the centre on the other half. This in fact is the sequence you saw in the opening of the film. So if we switch on the current again and I put the plate on you can see it's pulling here and I let go it goes down the bottom and comes back and it just oscillates up and down like this gradually damping. The damping being the fact that the motion um, is over a shorter distance. Now if I get the plate stopped here and I put on another plate, this particular aluminium plate is much smaller and in fact when I let go you can see that the motions damp much more quickly and it eventually would come to a standstill in the middle. Now it wouldn't be very practical to actually have a track running from say Edinburgh to London with coils like this all the way, sort of about 400 and odd miles of them. It would be far too expensive for one thing and it would take an enormous amount of electricity to actually power them. So what could be done is to put the coils into a train and then to make the train run on top of an aluminium track. And here is a short film of a research vehicle that has in fact been constructed.